My name's Guy Kestevan. I've been a mountain biking kit tester professionally for over 25 years. And today I'm giving you a tech talk around on the new On One Wrecker. Now I say this is the new On One Wrecker. Some of you may recognize it as very similar to the Titus Locomoto. Uh, basically uh, they are sister brands, but it was felt that something as radical as this uh, super slack hardcore hardtail kind of sat better in the on one more rowdy more crazy range than it did in the Titus. It's a little bit more mature a little bit more upmarket but the great news is you get all that same Titus attention to detail and finishing transferred across into uh, the new branded bike so specifically i mean well we're talking about it now we'll go into it early so you've got these really lovely cmc machined cowl dropouts there with this big big through axle on there move along here you've got these nice really nicely reflex curved s bend uh, stays there masses of room under that a frame there and then looking down here you can see you've got another machined plate there on the front of the chainstay and that gives you clearance between the chain ring and the tire uh, that you wouldn't get with a normal tube and you can see it's still got a really nice cnc machined rib detail there and the on one star logo in there as well and then you can see in the tube set primarily a round tube set in this 3al 2.5v titanium but just as you get up to the head there it overlies for a little bit you know it's a shallower so good torsionally uh, a little bit of flex vertically and you've got that curve there for maximum fork clearance and then just as it comes back down to this bottom bracket squares out slightly for just enough addition of stiffness without spoiling that rider titanium and see it down there you've got a full iscg 05 chain protect chain guide mount which isn't a bad idea on a hardtail that you can ride like absolute madness and the reason i'm saying that about the riding is primarily the geometry on this bike as you can see crazy long reach on this large it's 510 mil so even on a medium you're getting 479 mil reach and as you can see super steep seat tube there 77 degrees putting that saddle nice and forward for a uh, really poised climbing position but the real number that everyone kind of gets worked up about on this bike is the head angle 62 degrees with a 150 mil fork in there so proper downhill slack I and mean, even for downhill that's pretty damn slack and it just gives the bike amazing stability and confidence especially when you add 457 mil chain stays into the back end so super long wheelbase i mean longer than most 150 mil travel uh, full suspension bikes but that just makes it an absolute rock solid stable bike at speed. But if you watch the live ride review, it's surprisingly usable as a daily driver. It still catches me out, caught me out when I did the Hello Dave, which is basically the steel version of this bike. But because that titanium tube set on here saves about a kilo over that steel frame on the Hello Dave, the whole bike comes in under 14 kilos. So, you know, it's pretty damn rideable and one, yeah, it takes a little bit to get used to that head angle, but once you've uh, dialed into it, because you've got this super short Selkoff stem and you've got a decent leverage through this Selkoff Enduro 6 bar on the front there, it just, yeah, you set off and it flops around a bit, but once you've got it rolling, really, really poised and surprisingly rideable as just a general cross-country trail bike, as long as you take that big uh, wheelbase into account. So, you know, it'll occasionally scuff its rear wheel on something you expect it to go around. And it's really hard to pull the front wheel up. Uh, so you'll have to relearn your manuals and your wheelies a bit just because that long chain state and that slack front end just, well, it just changes the leverage points. But in terms of performance in the rowdy stuff, this thing is just an absolute riot. So watch the Live Rider video and I'll just finish off by talking you through some of the spec components here. Already talked about the bars and stem. You've got uh, on one grips with a nice diamond filed tread pattern on there. You've got uh, G2R brakes from SRAM. And then, I mean, the real highlights on this bike are, for a start, you've got a RockShox Lyric Ultimate fork. So it's the uh, 2021 model. So you've got Charger 2 up top there, not the Charger 3, which hasn't been a complete overwhelming success so to be honest for the most reliable consistent fork this is the lyric i'd go for anyway and then 
you. And then you've got full SRAM GX wireless transmission. So you've got shifters up on the bar, and then down here you've got that GX axis rear mech with the battery just housing, just the battery just hiding under this protective uh, casing on the back there. So fully wireless cable transmission. But as you can see, if you want to run it wired in a conventional way, you've got full external routing points anyway. And there is a bike, this is 3K. Uh, as it stands, which is phenomenal value. But uh, there's a conventional GX wired bike for 2,300 with a pike up front. But, you know, you'd be very, very hard pressed even to find an alloy bike with this spec, let alone a titanium one uh, for this price. And as a complete package, super, super impressive. Oh, one thing I forgot to say, you got proper hydraulic reverb uh, seat post there with 175 mil stroke. Because even though it's super long, you're still getting a relatively uh, compact seat tube in there, and it's straight, so there's no uh, there's no worries about uh, bottle cage bolts on there or any kinks in the tube stopping you being able to fit a long stroke seat post. But if you do need water bottle cages, you've got a mount down there. And then one final really important thing in terms of the spec, you are getting these Hutchinson Griffiths. Tubeless ready uh, tyres as standard. One of my favourite all-round enduro treads. Uh, really grip, I mean, not the best in super sloppy mud, but for all-round use, really lovely feel as soon as you get them set up tubeless. And they're sitting on broad WTB STI 30 rims for plenty of support, and you get 29 by 2.5 on the front. And then the rear is a 29 by 2.4 with a slightly shallower tread. Uh, that's the way Hutchinson design it for a slightly faster roll on the rear. But, so you've got a nice fast pickup, as you can hear. A really fast 150 point engagement on the free hub there. And as well as adding a really distinctive ride quality to the bike, sort of, it's a real sort of blend of the spring of steel with the lightweight of aluminium and some of this kind of muscle and power, particularly on this tube set. So it's just, it's a gorgeous feel to ride. And of course, it's not painted, so you don't have to worry about scratching the paint. All the logos are either laser etched or uh, in the case of the head tube badge, actually engraved into the frame. And uh, it's, you know, if you do scratch the titanium, you can just get it back to bright with uh, a bit of Brasso and some steel wool, but you know, super durable uh, material to make a frame out of. So that's the technical talk through, but in this case, you absolutely have to watch the live ride review to see just how capable this, ride, this bike is when it comes to tackling chaos and carnage, but also how surprisingly good it is as kind of a daily trail driver. So massive thanks to Planet X and On1 for sending the bike in for test and thanks to them for supporting this video as well so you don't have to sit through excessive adverts uh, to get to the good bits. But make sure you watch that live review, click for notifications, click to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and tell your mates about Geikes TV if you think they'll enjoy watching an old man talk about bikes to a GoPro. But for now, I've been Guy Kesterman on Guy Case TV, talking about the truly radical, brilliant value, titanium framed, on one wrecker, hardcore trail bike.